Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vass and welcome to Kickstarter Look Back. This is a series where I take a look at different projects we backed here at the Dice Tower for Kickstarter projects. Did we get them? Did we not? What did we think? So I take a look at 12 at a time. So let's get started here. And we're going to start with a pretty big one called Endless Winter. You may have heard this one. It just won the Dice Tower Best Strategy Game of the Year. So that's obviously going to have something to do uh, with you knowing if we like it or not. But I mean... I enjoyed this a lot. I didn't like it as much as Mike did. Uh, Mike and I think Chris really love this game. And I mean, it's high production. A lot of people really enjoy it. It does have, a, you know, sometimes a bit of a feel of mechanisms in a box. But this is a swing and a hit from Fantasia Games right outside the box. I'm pretty happy with this one. And I'm really looking forward to their other projects. So there's just a lot of cool things. Cool theme. Great art by the Micho. Uh, a lot of this stuff going on. There's lots of expansions. I haven't touched any of them, but I know some people enjoy them. So, cool. That's a good one to start off with. And then we'll jump right on top of that with Feed the Kraken. So, Feed the Kraken. Now, this game here is another game, Fun Tales. Glad to see them doing stuff. It's this really big, giant social deduction game, which isn't that big. When you see it set up, someone's like, do you want to play? You're like, I don't know. And even them, they're like, it's 45 to 90 minutes. It's closer to 45, honestly. It's this, but the production is nice and lavish. You're trying to move the ship across or trying to sink the ship or trying to get the cultist leader thrown overboard. It's just a neat idea. It plays very smoothly. It takes things from other games, a little bit from Good Cop, Bad Cop, and some voting games. But I enjoyed it, and the big production, I think, helps it a lot. So Feed to Crack, and this one is a top notch. It's two in a row. Wander Squares, the Underwood Tunnels. This is one, unfortunately, that I guess we got here to Dice Tower. I just don't ever remember getting it. I was kind of excited about this one, and then I never played it. These tiles are, it has a very unique style artwork as you're moving through, like a dungeon looking for treasure with a book and stuff. I don't, ah, this is kind of a bummer because I wanted to, to, to play this one, and I guess it just got missed somehow, which is unfortunate because it, again, it just feels very, very unique and interesting. Sons of Fair Isle, this is from Tabula Games, and I tend to like a lot of Tabula Games. I enjoy their production values, and the production on this one is stellar. Look at these cool masks that everyone wears. And there's a lot going on with these masks and getting these big beasts to come to your area. I found this one to be an exercise in futility, though. There was a lot of tiny actions that didn't go anywhere. The rule book was very, very obtuse. Um... And the game just didn't seem to be a lot of fun, which is too bad because it looks fantastic, all the stuff going on. Uh, Tabula has a lot of great games, but this one for me just wasn't as good as the rest of them, which is a real bummer because I wanted to like it so much. Pachacuna, or however you say this, the Llama game. Here's another one that looks really great, and it looks like an abstract game. So if you've never seen this one, it is a two-player abstract game. I think you play teams maybe, but two at least. And one person moves on the, the green area, another person moves on the mountains with their llamas. And you're just trying to, it's a pick up and deliver. You're trying to pick stuff up and deliver it to the other side. I felt like there's a few problems with the game. One is someone can get ahead. It was a little too long. I didn't dislike it. I just didn't love it as much as I thought I would. It looks great. Um, and these little llamas are cute riding across the board with these different, you know, bolts of cloth on their back or dyes, I guess they are. Um, but it just didn't really stick out for me. In fact, the first time I thought of it since I played and reviewed it was now. Mariana Trench, this one here, um, Mike Delicia reviewed this one because it's a one to two player game. And, you know, I don't remember what he told me about it. I was very interested in it. This is beautiful. The, the deep sea. I mean, look at all these different creatures. And it's one of those times, look at that play mat. That's just so gorgeous. I think the Meg is down there somewhere. So a lot of cool things about this one. But, um, yeah, I never got around to playing it. But I'll just assume it's a fun solo game. Shogun no Katana, this is a game with a lot of miniatures in it, but you know what? Not a miniatures game. This is definitely a Euro style game. And so in this one, you are placing workers around the board with some very expensive optional workers and you're building weapons. So the whole game, and there's, I'm going to be scrolling here a lot, and they're going to show a lot of miniatures here and stuff, but it's all about making weapons. So right here, see this? You can see the weapons being moved around. Um, the different, 
it seems like a really cool idea, and in, pra in practice, it was it was okay. It was okay. This this game is very much okay, but I didn't feel there's enough cool actions, and I felt unfulfilled at the end of it, which is a real bummer. Especially when they're like, you can build the ultimate weapon, but it's really hard to do, and I know it doesn't feel like it's worth that much when you you make it. So this one was just okay for me. Star Scrappers Orbital. This is one that I don't know that I've ever played. I think it came in because I know there was two of them, Star Scrappers Orbital and Star Scrappers something else. Maybe it was just called Scrappers. I don't remember. Um, this is Star Scrappers Orbital, right? Star Scrappers Cave-In. I think these came in. These miniatures look great, but this is one that just kind of slipped through the cracks, I guess. Bardsung. Big, giant dungeon crawl and this is from steam forge games now i think there's no question that steam forge games makes some of the best if not the best miniatures in the market their stuff looks great they also somehow managed to score some of the biggest ips in the market they got elders elden scrolls coming up and yet i dislike most of their games i think they're more about the miniatures and they're more about trying to translate an authentic video game experience and it doesn't always play well as a board game this dungeon one, which we played live here on the channel, and I don't think our initial play of it was the best, um, but it just left me feeling kind of cold. I like dungeon crawls. I like the idea. This one felt a little complex, loosey-goosey, didn't feel particularly innovative. Yeah, you're all bards, I guess, but that's not that big of a deal, and I just was kind of not that excited about it. Brick and Mortar. So I didn't know much about this one. I was excited about it when I saw it because I liked the economic idea about it. See this quote? I'm actually pretty excited about this one. But I'll tell you what, it really kind of blew me away with what a deep, heavy game this is. You're opening up the different stores in front of you and then you control the buying and the selling of resources that comes out. And it's a very tight back and forth um, economic game. So if I think there's too much food coming into the market, I'm going to try to make less food or else I'm going to switch and I'm going to start selling food and try to undercut other people. Really, you know, you're bidding how many goods and the selling goods. It's such a great system and I think a lot of people will really like it. This one didn't blow the doors off on Kickstarter, but I have a very high opinion of this one. Then we have Mission Catastrophe. Cardboard Alchemy. You may have heard of them from Flamecraft. Well, this was before Flamecraft. This was their first game. And I was very excited about it because these miniatures, I love this little guy who's standing on one leg and docking and it just looked cool. Now this is a semi-co-op game, which gave me some pause, but I was told, hey, this is a semi-co-op game that actually works. Spoiler alert, I don't think it does. You're just trying to get off a ship. Anyone, you know, can get off the ship and survive, but I'm gonna make sure you don't if I can't get off the ship, I guess. It looks cool, but I felt like this one really fell flat. Now, fortunately, it did not affect this company because Flamecraft is amazing. This game has tremendous production. Don't think the game's great. Flamecraft also has tremendous production, and I do think that game is great. Last, we have Momiji. This is a poetic card game by Autumn Colors and Stunning Landscapes in Japan. It's gorgeous. Definitely in the whole nature overwhelming number of nature themes that are out here. I did not play this one. Z Garcia did. I asked him about it this morning and he said it was okay. Not that great. And that the artwork and everything was better than the game, which is a bummer because I think I would wanted to play this one more. Uh, but I will take Z's recommendation and um, well, too bad, I guess. So there you go, folks. That's several different Kickstarters. Tell me what you think. Which one of these is your favorite? For me, I'm going to guess maybe it's Feed the Kraken, although I really like that brick and mortar one. Um, which one should I give a second chance to? Or which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. But until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Kickstarter Look Back on the Dice Tower.